Hi everyone, and welcome back to another performance analysis from PC Gamer. Since its launch last November, Battlefield 5 has had the distinction of being the one and only DirectX ray tracing game that's publicly available. I've seen DXR enabled private builds for a few other games like Shadow of the Tomb Raider and Metro Exodus, but we're still waiting for the promised patch on the former and the release of the latter. And given the track record for DXR, Metro will probably launch without ray tracing support as well and will add that in a patch at some future date. Which leaves us with Battlefield 5. Say what you will about the multiplayer game, I'm here to look at the graphics settings and performance as well as see how much DXR does or doesn't improve the visuals. Given the competitive multiplayer nature of Battlefield, it's difficult to imagine most gamers being willing to cut performance by 30 to 50% just for ray traced reflections. There's a DLSS patch supposedly in the works which should bring performance with DXR enabled back to where it was at, but DLSS can introduce blurriness and it renders at half the pixels of the target resolution and then upscales, so it's not a perfect solution either. Battlefield 5 performance ends up being a question of what you want to enable. Use the low preset without ray tracing and most current mid-range and high-end graphics cards will break 144 FPS. Even at maximum quality, 1080p and 60fps is still possible on everything from a GTX 1060 or RX 570 and up. But 4K Ultra is another matter, where well, you'll need at least an RTX 2070 to hit 60fps, and that's without DXR. Turn on ray tracing, and even the RTX 2080 Ti will struggle at 4K. But let's hit the benchmarks and see how the game runs across a large selection of GPUs, CPUs, and notebooks. Starting at minimum quality in 1080p, every dedicated graphics card I tested breaks 60fps and even the Vega 11 graphics in the Ryzen 5 2400G plugs along at a reasonable 43fps. AMD's GPUs do tend to beat their Nvidia equivalents in Battlefield 5, something we'll see repeatedly in the testing, with the RX 560 pulling ahead of the GTX 1050, and the now budget priced RX 570 even beats the GTX 1060. Looking at the full set of benchmarks, I should note that I couldn't test performance on Intel's integrated graphics. Battlefield 5 simply refused to run. We might see updated drivers fix that, but I wouldn't expect much in the way of performance. With no resolution scaling option, Intel's HD Graphics 630 typically runs about one-third as fast as the Vega 11, so even 720p is going to be a stretch. Increasing the graphics quality to the medium preset drops performance by about 25% on most of the GPUs, though with a 200 FPS maximum, some of the top cards still run into that limit. AMD's RX 570 and 580 easily come out ahead of their NVIDIA alternatives, the GTX 1060 cards. That's especially true if we account for pricing, where the 570 now costs less than the GTX 1050 Ti, and the 580 is cheaper than the GTX 1060 3GB. One thing I should also mention is that I've tested everything using the DX11 rendering path because DirectX 12 mode performed worse on every GPU I checked. Except, if you want to enable DXR and ray traced reflection, you need to use the DX12 mode. I've stuck with the medium preset, so this is using medium quality DXR reflections, which basically means fewer rays cast in order to keep from tanking performance. Even so, the four RTX cards run anywhere from 40 to 50% slower with DXR enabled. The RTX 2060 and 2070 take the biggest hit, while the 2080 models don't look quite as bad because they were bumping into the frame rate cap before. For a single player game, I can see plenty of people with high end rigs being willing to sacrifice frame rates for the boost in image quality that ray tracing provides, but in multiplayer mode, I think competitive gamers are likely to leave ray tracing off. Not that you couldn't play at 1080p medium just fine with the RTX cards. Most of us just aren't at a skill level where we'd really benefit from 160 FPS compared to just 84 FPS, though in multiplayer, I have noticed that frame rates tend to be lower than what I'm showing in these charts. I'm skipping over the high preset, as it's only slightly less demanding than the ultra preset and in terms of image quality looks about the same. Running on mid-range GPUs like the GTX 1060 and RX 580, we're still seeing more than 60 frames per second, which is great. Higher end cards like the 1070 and Vega 56 will even break 100 FPS, with AMD still leading in both cases, though the RTX 2060 basically ties the Vega 56 in performance while providing extra features and using a lot less power. Flipping the DXR switch again takes its toll, though it's not quite as severe at the ultra setting. Basically, ultra quality without DXR already drops performance quite a bit. The cards stack up as you would expect, with the 2080 Ti through 2060 all still averaging 60 FPS, but the 2060 does dip below that mark on occasion. 
Basically, you drop performance about 45% by enabling DXR. Overall, NVIDIA's GPUs still rule the charts, but only at often significantly higher prices. The RTX 2070 is just a hair faster than the Vega 64, but we're talking about a $500 minimum GPU compared to a card that now routinely falls below $400. And of course, all of the GTX models from NVIDIA are being phased out. Only the GTX 1060 still remains on sale, and that may not last much longer. Performance at 1440p Ultra is still quite good, with the RX 580 and above breaking 60fps, and the RTX 2070 and above breaking 100fps. The GTX 1070 even manages to keep minimum frame rates above 60, at least for the benchmark sequence. However, if you have a FreeSync or G-Sync display, the variations of frame rate won't be a problem and you can safely run at 1440p Ultra on a high-end card. With DXR enabled, only the 2080 Ti is able to keep minimums above 60fps. It's also about 70% faster than the RTX 2060 and 30% faster than the 2070 and about 15% faster than the 2080. The 2080 and 2080 Ti both break 60 FPS averages with dips below that mark. However, in multiplayer, the dips tend to be more frequent, so even if you want to enable DXR, you'd still be best off turning a few settings down a notch or two. Overall, 1440p is still viable for high-end GPUs with RX 590 and GTX 1070 being recommended. All of the RTX cards also perform well if you leave DXR off, typically better than we see in some other games, highlighting some of the improvements of NVIDIA's Turing architecture. Given the current pricing, the RTX cards are now the best option for 1440p and above. And finally, 4K Ultra at 60fps is really only possible with the fastest graphics cards. The GTX 1080 Ti manages this, and RTX 2070 and above as well, while AMD currently lacks anything that can do this. The upcoming Radeon 7 should change that if performance estimates end up being accurate, however. 4K with DXR is a different story entirely. The 2080 Ti averages 50fps, so you'll either need to lower the settings or the resolution. The RTX 2060 with 6GB of VRAM, meanwhile, also drops quite a bit relative to the other cards. I've seen this behavior with other DXR tests, including 3D Mark Port Royale. Ray tracing in general appears to like lots of memory and memory bandwidth for your graphics card. Overall, 4K Ultra isn't going to be a usable resolution for anything other than the most extreme of gaming PCs. 1440p is a better overall choice, especially with higher refresh rates being readily available and relatively affordable. Or you could run up 4K and drop the settings to low and you basically double the performance shown here, in which case many other cards could run up 4K. For the CPU testing, to emphasize the difference between the various CPUs, I'm running the RTX 2080, a bit less crazy than the RTX 2080 Ti. I've tested on seven different CPUs, both with and without DXR enabled. At 1080p low, the Core i9-9900K is about 50% faster than the Core i3-8100, but that 200 FPS limit is a factor. Moving up to ultra quality, the gap between the Core i9 and the Core i3 remains about the same, with the AMD processors trailing the Intel options. Where things get interesting is when we enable DXR. I initially figured DXR would shift the bottleneck all the way over to the graphics card, but that's clearly not the case. Instead, it looks like enabling DXR, or perhaps just DX12, really favors CPUs with more cores and threads. Even the full 6 cores of the i5-8400 aren't sufficient, with performance dropping below the Ryzen 5 2600X, and minimum FPS really takes a hit on anything with less than 12 threads. Looking at the full suite of CPU results, cores and threads are clearly helpful in Battlefield 5, even without DXR, but they're absolutely required if you want to enable ray tracing. The Core i3-8100 has so much stuttering that it's basically useless, and micro-stuttering on the i5-8400 and Ryzen 5 2400G is very noticeable. If you're just going for high frame rates without DXR, which is what most competitive players will do, it's less of a concern. Older CPUs are likely to struggle a bit, but the i3-8100 and above all run plenty fast. That means previous generation Intel CPUs like a Core i5-6600K should do just fine. For gaming notebooks, since we don't have any RTX notebooks just yet, we don't have as many options to sift through. CPU performance is still a factor, so a fast desktop CPU with a slower graphics card will trump even the fastest gaming notebooks at lower quality settings, but average frame rates for all three notebooks are well above 60fps, though with dips below that on the slower notebooks. Even at maximum quality in 1080p, the GTX 1060 still breaks 60fps. 
1080p Ultra also allows the mobile GTX 1080 to finally move ahead of the desktop 1060. Due to the slower CPUs on the tested notebooks, maintaining a steady 60fps is difficult. The good news is that notebooks with Coffee Lake processors should benefit from the extra cores and hopefully stay above 60 on the 1070 and above. Once again, thanks to MSI, who provided PC Gamer with the hardware and sponsorship for these performance analysis articles. I used MSI's Z390 MEG Godlike motherboard as my primary testbed for the Intel CPUs and the MSI X470 Gaming M7 AC motherboard for Ryzen processors. Both systems use 16GB of DDR4-3200 CL14 memory from G-Skill with the game loaded from SSD storage in all cases. As the current poster child for NVIDIA's RTX graphics cards and ray tracing in general, Battlefield 5 has a lot riding on it. Even after multiple patches and driver updates to improve ray tracing performance, enabling the feature, and only for reflections, still causes a pretty massive drop in performance and as a primarily multiplayer game, it's not a great showcase for the technology as even gamers that have RTX cards are likely to disable it for competitive reasons. That doesn't mean ray tracing technology is bad or unnecessary, but being the first modern game to utilize the tech means it's at best a taste of what's to come. The good news is that you don't need an RTX card or ray tracing to get a great experience out of Battlefield 5. All modern GPUs can break 60 FPS at 1080p using the right settings, and high-end cards can push 1440p and even 4K without much trouble. None of which will help you if you're a lousy shot.